Ask Reddit. Reddit. I just screwed up royally at work. Let me hear your worst work duck up stories. Not mine, but a co-worker's. I used to work manufacturing large televisions. The company had just received a shipment of 5104 inch screens from a vendor. A brand new employee was charged with transporting and stacking them. Just as he's stacking the 50th screen, it slips out of his hands. It falls and shatters all 50 screens. In his first 4 hours of work he manages to destroy more than 2 million dollars in material, and set back production by weeks. Back in high school, I had a job as a web designer at a small web shop servicing non-profit organizations. My bosses didn't let on that I was as young as I was, and they handled all the face-to-face -face client meetings. My job basically entailed designing and preparing the website for our clients. One of our big clients was Christopher Reeve Paralysis Foundation. I sliced up the site and put in filler text, knowing full well that only people coming from our internal IP would be able to see the development. I should mention that my company was small, close-knit and had a great, albeit vulgar, sense of humor. Rather than going the standard Laura Mibsum route, I instead filled in something along the lines of, Herp derp I'm Christopher Reeve, I drive myself with a straw. Weaknesses include kryptonite and falling of horses. It got worse, but I'll let your imaginations fill in the blanks. There were about four paragraphs of filler text. I came into work after school one day, and all three of my company's owners slash my bosses were waiting for me. I thought they were pulling some prank, but they asked me to come into their office. At this point I knew something was definitely up. My boss, Chris and Dana saw the site. Me, what? Who? Him, CRPF. Chris and Dana Reeve. The director wanted to show them the progress. Apparently he didn't check before he showed it to him in person. At this point, I think my stomach hit the floor and kept going straight onto the earth's core. My boss told me he'd let me know what the next steps were, but just to know that I was in deep, deep shit. Anyway, I didn't get fired, despite how adamant Dana Reeve was about the fact, and I had to write an apology to the Reeves. I found out later that Chris actually had a pretty solid sense of humor, and thought it was funny. Rest in peace, Mr. and Mrs. Reeve. TLDR, I insulted Superman and lived to tell the story. I work in a theme park, and on this particular day, I was manning the control booth. I was sitting in the chair, which was a rolling office type chair, when I decided I wanted to stand. I hopped down and somehow managed to propel the chair into the wall with my ass. The chair slammed directly into a fire alarm, and the lever ended up getting depressed and pulled down. By a chair. I stared at it in horror for a moment, but nothing happened, until suddenly, BEE. 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 Yup, I set off a fire alarm. With my ass. So, when you have a fire alarm at a ride, you have to cycle all of the guests clear of the attraction, kick all of the guests out of the queue, and then evacuate all of the employees while you wait for the fire department to come and give you the okay to resume normal operation. Once we had gotten the venue fully evacuated, I was freaking out. I figured I was in huge trouble, with inconveniencing several hundred guests and wasting the fire department's time and all. I came clean to my supervisor immediately, I mean, I was the only person in the control booth, it would be obvious that I had done something, so, better let her know of my clumsiness, before she thought I had had a more sinister agenda. To my great surprise, she started laughing hysterically, and told me not to worry about it. The ride ended up being closed for like an hour and a half, and during that time, I had at least 7 or 8 managers and supervisors from around the park come and make fun of me. I think the best part of the whole situation though, was that after the incident, my supervisor and I decided there should be a cover over that fire alarm, so, we gave a call to the safety department. We never did get a cover, because apparently a room full of engineers and the man in charge of safety resort, wide spent hours trying to fling a chair at that goddamn fire alarm and not one of them could recreate what I somehow managed to do in one try. With my ass. I still get shit for that one, and it happened nearly two years ago. I used to work at a car rental place. My job was to clean the cars, get them ready for customers, 
and do the inspection of the car before people took off with them. One day I was in the lot, parking a truck that I had just cleaned, and got out to head back into the office. It wasn't uncommon for people to come up to me with their rental papers, and ask for the keys to their car, so, as I was walking back, a couple of older sort of grimy looking guys walked up to me. The one guy said, hey, we're all done inside, and the lady said that truck is ours. I'm not even going to make excuses for why I did it, but without even asking a question I said, okay great, here ya go, and handed him the keys. I thought it was weird at the time, because when I handed the guy the keys, his friend said, duck, under his breath and looked pissed. Anyways, I walk back into the office without a care in the world, and I see my boss. She asks if I saw those two guys out in the lot, and I said, the guys who rented the truck? Yep. Then she looks at me with her jaw on the floor and says, no. She turns around immediately and calls the cops to tell them we just had a truck stolen from our lot. Weeks go by, and eventually the truck turns up, out in the middle of nowhere. The cops find needles and booze all over the inside, and they returned it back to us. I had to go to the police station, to pick the guy I gave the keys to, out of a photo lineup. TLDR, I worked at a car rental company and basically assisted in a grand theft auto. For many years I worked in windows and doors. This gave me an opportunity to witness some massive duck ups. Some were made by contractors, some were made by manufacturers, some by my mill, and indeed some by me. I had spent years developing an excellent reputation for working on high end homes. I worked with the architects on the front end, the clients and the contractors on the back end. It was a sweet deal for a guy in his late 20s. The money was good and I was turning away clients. So, it was a real boon for me to land a gig in Seattle, working with some great clients on some amazing homes. Being from the Bay Area, I reluctantly agreed to move to Washington. These jobs were big, and needed serious project management, so I needed to be on site a few times a week. Well, the primary residence I was working on was located in the Orker Islands and was a completely custom job, custom paint, custom wood, custom millwork, custom glass, custom hardware. The total job cost was $750,000 plus, and I was acting as an independent contractor supplying the material. We spent 9 months planning every detail, generating a construction document of 500 plus pages. We spent 2 whole days before ordering the product, going over the specs line by line. I had the client and the contractor sign off on every line item. Finally, I got a deposit on the material and initiated the order. The whole order took 6 months to receive. Once everything was in and the contractor was ready, I made plans for the delivery. It was not an easy delivery, so I brought in a driver I knew from my work in Big Sur. It was a muddy mess getting the material to the job site, and took 3 trips over 5 days to fill the unfinished garage with all of the windows. We met with the contractor and inspected the goods, everything was fine. He signed off, and all I needed to do was go home, wait for the final check, the part of the payment that had my profit in it. I stopped and had a beer with my driver friend, and headed back down to the ferry dock to take the ride over to my house on Bainbridge, when my phone rang. It was the interior designer. These aren't the right color. He said. All the blood in my body drained. I quickly grabbed my briefcase and started to flip through the work order. Every ducking page of the 500 pages of order said the color that was delivered. I insisted, I've got the contract signed by the client and the contractor. It's the color that was ordered. This color will not do. I have ordered siding, trim, everything is coming in for the color we changed it to. I hesitated and asked to let me review everything and get back to them. I got back to my office and gathered all my paperwork, and right there, dated on the orders file folder, change color to blah blah blah. I ate the windows, I ate the temporary windows, I supplied them to keep the job on track, I ate chargebacks from the contractor, I lost two upcoming jobs, I ate the cost of sending a crew out and replacing the windows with the correct ones. I ate everything and had to order the windows again. I had moved my family up to Seattle for this job, I got a house, I bought a new car, etc. I was all in on this job. I went out of business at the end of the job. 
returned to the Bay Area, and went back to college. I will never put myself in the position where a one-line duck up, will duck anything up that bad. Damn, that felt good to write about. Found a lighter in my pocket, while standing in my boss's office at the deli I worked at. I was bored. I had to run past the entire deli counter screaming to get to the sink when I lit my shirt on fire. There were at least 15 customers in line. I was a stage manager at a 3000 seat hall in downstate New York, and was doing a performance of Julio Iglesias. Due to a snowstorm that day, I predicted a cancellation, so, myself and about 5 other stage hands hit the hotel lobby bar for about 3 hours prior to doors. The radio DJs who were supposed to introduce him did not arrive on time. Even with the snow, the house was sold out and packed. I walked out on stage and stumbled over a cable, and almost fell from the deck, recovering. I walked up to the mic, with spotlights on me all the way, and proceeded to blank on his name, and managed, duo and gracious, and ambled off the stage. Narrowly escaped unemployment. I used to work at Chuck E. Cheese and was taking a pizza from the kitchen to the customer. At the time, it was extremely busy, and there were little devils running everywhere, and this lady was at the far end, so, I had to zigzag through the games to get to her. So after successfully maneuvering through a bunch of games and small children with two pizzas on my hands, I came within 10 feet of her table, and thought I was home free. Well, turns out there was a 2 year old kid crawling right in front of me. I tripped on the kid, the pizzas went flying and hit another kid, and both of the kids were crying because I stepped on one, and nailed the other with pizza. And before you think this can't get any worse, I then had to deal with the parents, that part alone still makes me shudder to this day. After about 45 minutes of yelling at me, they pressure my manager to fire me. My manager's a cool guy, so he said no. But he pulled me aside and told me he would have to pretend to go batshit crazy on me, to make the parents happy. He did, and it was the finest acting I have ever seen a non-actor pull off. It even scared me for a minute. I continued working in that hellhole for another year, before I left for college. I used to work at a radio station that had the rights to broadcast NESCAR. Working the races was probably the most boring 4 hours of my life, as it required listening for the lead into commercial breaks, switching the feed to our local commercials for a couple of minutes, and then switching it back to the race. I would usually watch TV or browse the internet throughout the entire race. At one point, I switched to commercials, and completely forgot to switch the race back on. So, after a few minutes of commercials, the station went completely silent and stayed that way for about 20 minutes, until I realized it was way too quiet in the studio. A minute or two of dead air was enough to get us in trouble. 20 minutes should have gotten me fired, but it was Nescar so nobody noticed, 